If you just next, next, next your way through SQL Server setup, you can go a really long way. SQL Server works really well with its defaults. But if you change just a few key things, you can make a big difference in terms of reliability and performance. So in this class's notes, you have this script. And I'm going to have you make just a couple changes to it before you go hit execute. And I'm going to explain what these lines do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by explaining the lines you want to change. For those of you who just trust me and want to hit execute, you can then go just run it at that point. For the rest of you who want to learn about each individual SP configure setting, I'll continue on from there. So let's focus on the stuff that you have to change at first. Up at the very top, the first thing up here, say, or one of the first things up here says maximum degree of parallelism. By default, any one running ugly query, like if somebody runs a big, ugly, nasty report, it can take over a whole lot of cores on your SQL server. When you have a bare metal physical server, these days SQL Server's install wizard automatically sets this, but with a virtual machine, it's much less intuitive. And let me tell you how you should set this on a virtual machine, which is what most of y'all are running. Say that your SQL Server has eight cores, just to pick a number, because I have eight CPU cores or eight fingers that I can easily hold up. I mean, I could do 10, but you don't do very often do 10 VMs or 10 core VMs. Say you've got eight CPU cores. Think of it as how many ugly queries do you want to be able to run at the same time? If you only don't mind if just one ugly query runs and decimate you, decimates your machine, you can leave max degree of parallelism at 8, or 0 is unlimited, but they're really the same thing in this case. Eight, uh, you could leave it at 8, meaning any one query can fire up and use all 8 cores. But I don't know about y'all, but I, for most of my clients, they don't want to just let one ugly query run at the same time. Generally, they're worried about multiple ugly queries running at the same time. So what you might want to do is think about the number of ugly queries that you want to run at the same time, take the number of cores in your VM, and do a simple division. If you want to be able to run two ugly queries at the same time, then each query would use four cores. You would probably set max degree of parallelism at four in that case. What if you want to be able to run a whole lot of ugly queries at the same time, like, say, eight or more, you might set max degree of parallelism at just one, so any one running ugly query doesn't decimate the whole entire server. That's how some software packages work. If you like uh, Microsoft Dynamics or SharePoint, when you install those on premises, they say only let a, any given running query just run one CPU core at a time. So have a little discussion with you and the end users. You, of course, they're going to want to say, we want to run an unlimited amount. OK, well, then each one query is only going to get one core. Yeah, but we want them all to be fast. That's not how math works. You don't pack an unlimited number of people into a clown car and expect it to hit the speed of sound. The highest that I would go in here is 8 on a virtual machine. Now remember this class is, far, is targeted at folks with 50 to 250 gigs worth of data. When you have up and above 250 gigs worth of data, that's where our other performance tuning classes come in, like the mastering classes. So that's how you would hand edit that one. Take the number of cores in the VM divided by the number of ugly queries that you want to be able to run at the same time in your worst case scenario. That's going to guide you towards how parallel each individual query should go. Next, backup checksum default. This was a new setting that was introduced in SQL Server 2014 or newer. If you have 2014 or newer, you could do this. Otherwise, just comment this line out. Then, going down through the rest of this, the only other one you might want to consider changing is down here at the bottom, I say, set your max server memory to 90% of a server's RAM. By default, SQL Server will suck every juicy byte out of, of memory out of your SQL Server, and that can present problems if you remote desktop in and you run other apps, or if you have other services installed into here then that starts to get a little bit tricky. For me, I like to leave 90% of memory just dedicated to SQL Server, as opposed to letting it suck up every byte. Because if someone remotes desktops in and runs Management Studio, this suddenly puts SQL Server under memory pressure, and then it starts shedding things that you would probably rather it keep, like execution plans up in memory. 
If you have a passionate feeling that it should be something other than 90%, you can change that number here instead of 0.9. If you wanted to leave 80% or you only use 80% of the server's memory, you could use 0.8. Generally, I want to just dedicate that VM only to running SQL Server, and that's it. Okay, so now having just talked about the things that are urgent to change, you can then copy paste this into yours, go hit execute. For the rest of you who want to learn about the individual details about what each line does, then you can keep watching. So I'll start from the very top up there, show advanced options. When you first install SQL Server, it hides a lot of the SP configure settings. So like if I want to change some of these, I have to turn that on first before I go and run any changes. So here I'm turning it on and I'm running reconfigure. What reconfigure does is it uh, puts into effect any changes that I've made to SP configure, like that show advanced up there. So now, after I've turned on Show Advanced, now I can start changing things. We've already covered this. Now let's talk for a second about what this backup checksum default is. By default, SQL Server will happily backup corrupt data all day long, and it won't throw a warning. It just assumes that if it sees Toyotathon in a date field, that Toyotathon is a valid date, ships it off into the backup, and calls it a day. That's not good enough for me. I want SQL Server to actually look at the data whenever it's running backups. I want it to check to make sure that that thing is actually free of corruption. So this is what that does. By default, it doesn't check for corruption during backups. SQL Server is obsessed with performance, and sometimes it would rather drive around without a helmet on when it really should have a helmet on. Cost threshold for parallelism, I have a whole dedicated article about. If you go to brentozar.com slash go slash CX packet, it basically talks about how a query must be this tall in order to ride the parallelism train. Uh, by default, that number is way too low. By default, that cost threshold is just five. So as a result, every query goes wild and parallel. This particularly presents problems in virtualization environments where I'm now suddenly fighting for CPU cycles every time I run a query when I really need to keep the small query single threaded to let other VMs on the host do their thing. Remote admin connections, whenever you get into an emergency and SQL Server feels like it's unresponsive, this gives you the ability to use the DAC, the dedicated admin connection, and we talk about that separately in another module. Backup compression, you want to be able to compress your backups by default. I like turning this on just so that everyone's backups default to compressed, so that when some yo-yo does a one-off uh, back, I don't know why I say yo-yo so often, that's weird how that works. But when some uh, one-off person does a backup, they don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about whether or not they specified compression, their backup will just run as quickly as possible. So that's the quick rundown of uh, settings to change in here. When you hit execute on this, there are a couple of things that are cl going to clear your plan cache. And I'm only mentioning this now because the, the people who just wanted to get a quick config and run out of the room are gone. But the things that will change your clear your plan cache are if you change the max degree of parallelism, it's going to change how parallel a query can go. So when this setting is changed and we run reconfigure, it's going to blow the plan cache. Cost threshold for parallelism, blow the plan cache exactly the same way when that thing changes. And interestingly, changing max server memory. In my experience, if you change max server memory down, then you're going to run into problems. I mean, run into problems is the wrong word. You're going to clear the plan cache. Strangely, setting max server memory higher does not clear the plan cache, at least in my experience. I don't know if that's ever been documented anywhere. I just tell people to assume whenever you're changing max server memory that you're probably going to free the plan cache. Is freeing the plan cache a bad thing? Not in servers of this size. Remember, this course is focused on SQL servers with 50 to 250 gigs of data. Not really that big of a deal. Run larger databases on my laptops for performance classes. So there you go. Those are the common SP configure settings. You can take this, set this off on your SQL server, and off you go.